In this video, we're going to talk about how to produce an ABM or advanced bill of material submittal here within Tecla Structures. The first step is that I'm going to have all of my structural steel framing in the model that I would like to create an ABM for. Now here there are two philosophies going forward once you get the stick model in. The first one is to do point to point. So here you can see that all of the stick framing, the beams here for instance, are going to the center line of columns and the center line of beams. And so if I were to uh, run a report of this, then the length of these two beams here would be both the same at 10 foot. But the other way to do this is if we go up to auto connections here underneath the edit menu in Tecla, go to components, create auto connections. There's this option here in the dropdown to choose from fittings or preliminary material for the auto connection groups. Then for the auto defaults, we can choose fitting preliminary setback of zero, quarter inch or half inch. Let's say that I'm gonna go ahead and choose half inch since that's pretty standardized for connection setbacks. I'll then select all the steel framing in the model that I would like to auto connect. And then I'll go ahead and say create connections here. This will then allow Tecla to go through and apply fitting component number 13 between all the beams and the columns as well as beam to beam connections. So here, this is not a finalized connection, but what it's doing is it's cutting back the material so that way it gets a bit shorter. This helps reduce a lot of the drop that the fabricator may want to prevent if you had done a point to point list. So again, just to see what this is, if I double click on this uh, green cone here, that shows you that this is fitting component number 13, and then it will input here a setback um, based on whichever criteria that you had chosen. Now the next step is to determine whether or not we need to assign preliminary marks or advanced bill marks to the steel in the model. If the fabricator is looking for an ABM mark or a preliminary mark to be tagged to the steel, this is uh, requested typically because they want some sort of tracking mark to uh, be able to identify which pieces are being nested into different bars that they're putting on a mill order to the mill. They then want to be able to remember those pieces that belong to different bars, especially when they tie this back and compare it to an issue for fabrication or issue for construction release. And they want to make sure that they have all of the correct material and then also look for any materials that potentially have changed. So this uh, ABM or preliminary mark is often used as a traceability to compare what they uh, ordered at an advanced bill order compared to what they actually are going to fabricate and put on cut lists. Okay, to actually assign those piece marks, what we're going to do is first come up here to Drawings and Reports at the top of Tecla, and then we'll go to Perform Numbering, and we'll number modified objects. That way it will compare all the beams and columns in the model, and it will assign piece marks and quantities. Now, the next thing here is if we select on this beam, we're going to right-click and go to User Defined Attributes. We'll see here that on the Parameters tab, there is this preliminary mark field, and right now it's currently empty. So the process that we need to do to take the current piece mark that Tecla assigned during numbering and assign that to the preliminary mark is we're gonna select the steel that we wanna assign the preliminary marks for, and then we'll go up here to numbering settings, and then we will go to the save preliminary numbers option. And once we choose that, it will take any of the current piece marks um, that have been assigned during numbering, and it will store that in that user defined attribute field. So I'll again go, go ahead and go to the user defined attribute again, and you'll see that B6 has now been assigned here. Now be aware that if you are going to do these cutbacks like I did here, where I have uh, cut the material back using the auto connection, you're gonna get uh, more uh, you know, preliminary marks or different piece marks for different pieces of steel, whereas a point-to-point -point condition would have actually made these two beams here, which are exactly the same size, it would have both made them the same if we no would not have done the cutbacks. But because we applied the cutbacks and this is going into different column sizes on each side of the building, this is going to get different preliminary marks. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This one here is going to get a B5, and then if I select this and press Get, you'll see that that's a B7. Okay, the next step is I'm going to create my submittal folder here on my computer. So I've created a series of templates for different submittal types, so I'll just copy this ABM submittal folder, and then I will paste that directly into my submittals folder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just change the name here to 23099 for the job number. This is gonna be submittal number one, it's an ABM, and then I will put today's date, so 2023, 08, and then 31. 
Okay, so inside of there, this is where I'm gonna put the contents of the ABM package. This is gonna include the IFC file, it'll have the Tecla Structures model, and I'm also gonna run a material list just to show you an example of how you can include like a human readable uh, report that the fabricator can use to compare the materials that you should be including in the IFC file for them to import into say, for instance, Tecla PowerFab, but it also gives them something to look at and compare against that they can read um, to compare what got imported. All right, so let's go ahead and do that next. All right, let's start with the IFC export. We'll go up to the Tecla menu, we'll then go to export, and we'll choose the IFC option here. We're going to specifically choose this and not the IFC4 option. The reason we're doing this is because there's a specific format that we need to use in here that we want to use that is not in the IFC4. Now here, I'm just basically put in for the name of the IFC file, the uh, exact same name as my submittal folder name, which is uh, basically got the job number, submittal number, ABM, and then today's date. And then what I'm going to do is I'm choosing IFC for the type, and this is really important here for the uh, Tecla PowerFab import. I'm going to choose the steel fabrication view option for uh, exporting this IFC. That's a special type of export that uh, Tecla PowerFab can read in um, that's gonna make it a lot faster and easier for it to import into bill of materials. Now, next what I'll do is I'll choose the EPM option here for property sets that'll be exported and included. And then I'm going to make sure I use selected objects because I'm gonna only pick the steel that I want uh, to be imported into Tecla EPM or PowerFab. And I don't want all objects because I don't want things like concrete or existing steel and stuff like that to go across. I'll keep that at model origin. And then over here on the advanced tab, really the important thing is to include assemblies, bolts, and welds. And that way um, all the steel objects and things are then brought across. Now, once we've got that all set, we'll just go ahead and select on the steel because we chose selected objects. And then we'll press the export button and it'll say here at the lower left that export is complete and now we have our IFC file. Now, some fabricators still want you to provide a KISS file. Um, so if they're not using Tecla PowerFab or even if they are and they request a KISS file specifically, you can go up to the Tecla menu and you can go to export and then you can choose the MIS option here. So we'll just go right here about halfway down. And what we'll do is we'll switch this to KISS and then you can provide the name of that. So we'll just make that the same name as the submittal. Now, once we've typed that in here, I've put a .kss extension at the end, and then we can just go ahead and say create selected, and it'll export those specific pieces of steel. Now, one thing that's really important for a fabricator here, if you're watching this video, if you get an IFC file and you get a, a KISS file and you're using PowerFab, do not use both of them into the same PowerFab project go with one methodology or the other. And I recommend the IFC because it has better change management. It actually looks at specific um, IDs of individual pieces, so you can get a lot better change management. Whereas the KISS file, um, when you import those, it only is gonna compare the preliminary marks and uh, the quantity changes and preliminary marks uh, for any kind of revisions and changes that are gonna happen. But it's important to just, uh, you know, for fabricators to understand, don't import both a KISS and a IFC into the same project. It just will create potential confusion and errors, um, you know, especially when you're dealing with revisions. So the KISS file, I'm showing that here mainly for certain fabricators that have uh, you know, production control or, or material information systems or software that don't support the IFC import. And KISS is a pretty standardized uh, traditional mechanism for importing bill of materials across the steel industry for different software. Um, so that's just a backup in case um, you, know, you can't import an IFC and you're not using, say, for instance, Tecla PowerFab. All right, so now let's go ahead and go up to our model folder here and let's go find those files. First of all, we have the IFC file that we exported. So that went into my IFC folder. I'll go ahead and cut that out here. And then I'm just gonna go into my uh, submittals folder and I will paste that file in here. So now I have that IFC in this submittal folder ready to submit. Now, if I was gonna be sending the KISS file, that's gonna be inside of the model folder here. And you'll see that there is the .kss file that's been created based on the submittal name that I typed in. Now, again, I'm not gonna provide both of these uh, to this particular fabricator because I don't wanna create confusion for them. I want to only provide the file type that I know that they should be importing into their software and that they're specifically requesting. And in this case, they're using Tecla PowerFab and I'm gonna provide the IFC file. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create the material list report that I was talking about earlier. So I'm gonna select all the steel that has the advanced bill marks and that I submitted in the IFC file. I'm gonna to go to drawings reports at the top of Tecla. I'll then go to the reports menu. And if I scroll down here, there is a 350 material list. Now the main one here will just provide a text file, but then there's an HTML and a PDF option. I'm gonna go ahead and use the PDF option. And then here in the title three field of the report dialog box, with all capital letters, I'm gonna type in the word prelim. And once I type that in there, that'll make sure that the ABM or prelim marks that I assigned to the sticks um, in, of steel in the model, those are gonna be included in this report. So I will then press the create selected button here at the bottom, and there we go. There's my PDF, and it shows here on the left the prelim marks of all the steel. So this is just a great report that you can include along with the IFC file or the KISS file if that's what the fabricator needs. So that way they can actually see a human readable list of the quantities, the grades, and the shapes that you had included in your KISS file or your IFC file. All right, so go ahead and go get that report. So I'll go to open model folder. And then here inside of the report subfolder, there's that material list. Now, as a detailer, I don't want to confuse the fabricator with that 350 prefix. That's just a, a number prefix in Tecla, so that way all the reports are grouped into certain sections. But I don't want them to ask me what that 350 is, so I tend to get rid of that before I copy it into the submittal package. So then I'll cut that out of my model reports folder. I'll go over here to the submittal package and I'll paste that in. And now they have that to be able to compare and take a look at. Now, sometimes I'll actually even take this here and I can uh, take the submittal number and put that as a prefix in there. But I'm gonna be okay here so that way they can just quickly see that this is the material list. Again, whatever you do with the fabricator, just be consistent. Do all of your submittals the same way so that way they can easily start to recognize what different things are. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to update Trimble Connect. So I will go over to the Trimble Connect tab here and I'm using the .tecla file and just uh, uploading the model directly here from within Tecla Structures rather than exporting an IFC. So I'll just choose the upload model option here. It's gonna prompt me, do I wanna save the model first? I'll say save and upload. And then here it's going to take that current model, save it and then upload and publish the .tecla file to the Trimble Connect project. Okay, now I'm ready to go ahead and zip up the Tecla Structures model. So I'm gonna to go to the Tecla menu, open the model folder here. Now, again, there is a video that I've created specifically on things that you need to do before you uh, create a submittal package and send that to the fabricator. And it covers uh, like having your view filter showing everything for the 3D view so nothing is filtered out. Um, you wanna have that view open so that way when they open up Tecla Structures, it's easy for them to see things here. Um, also, you wanna make sure that the model is excluded from sharing before you submit the Tecla Structures model to the customer. And also make sure that it is single user mode and not multi-user if you're using that functionality at your detailing office. All right, now one other thing that I tend to do is I tend to close down Tecla Structures completely. So I'm gonna save and close this and then I'll go back into that model folder. Now, why do I do that? The reason I'm doing that is then it just gets rid of the model locked file so that way when the fabricator opens, they don't get some message that says the model is locked. Um, because when Tecla Structures and the model is open, it has that file in the model folder. So that just gets rid of that. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna select all of the contents here. So I just clicked on one item and said Control A to get everything. But I'm gonna specifically go down here back to the DB1 file. So I'm just gonna uh, hold down Control, deselect that, select that again. And then I'll right click here. And in Windows 11, I'm just gonna to go to Show More Options and I'm gonna to go to this Send To Compressed Zip Folder. That'll then create a zip folder here and it will have the DB1 file as the name of that zip folder. And so there we go. Now that makes it very easy for the fabricator to just right click and say extract all, and then it will have the name of the model folder correctly as needed. So I'm just gonna cut this out of that model folder there, and then I'll just go put that into my submittal folder here, and I will paste that. And now I have all of the main contents required for producing and submitting this uh, ABM submittal to the fabricator. Now that the advance bill is complete, we're gonna go ahead and remove these fitting 13 components that did the setbacks. Now you can delete them one by one or manually before you apply your detailed connections, or we can come in here and we can use a selection filter to remove those. Let's go to the selection filter button here at the bottom of Tecla. 
We'll then go ahead and go to the bottom row here and we'll choose object, object type, and we're gonna choose equals connection. Then we'll go to one of the top rows here and we'll just change this from category part to component. We'll use the name property here and equals. In the value, we'll choose select from model. We'll then select the green fitting component here where it fills in the name into that value of that selected component. We'll then press apply and okay. And now if we window around the entire model, all those fitting 13 components are selected and then we can press the delete button on our keyboard and now they've been removed. Now notice that when I try to click on beams, the selection filter is still in play here. So we'll go back down here to our selection filter, just choose standard, and now we can select the beams and that component filter has been removed. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.